left, I, I guess they'd be able to lean into something a bit more defensive if they wanted to. Like a Braum, but I like this. Just, just end up waiting to see what the enemy support picks. Go for the counter, since there's really no, like, perfect duos for the Varus mm -hmm. left open. Ooh, the Wukong instant lock in here for Kanavi. And it's going to be the Annie here. So it's got to be mid lane for Yagao. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be bringing that mid. We're going to have Rel down in support and Kanavi on the Wukong. So the 5v5 potential is there. Also, just some good bursts in general. Looks like DS thinking about just going towards the Alistar, which would give some flexibility, right? It's champion that that goes playing to both having engage and disengage to try to peel for Jackie Love in these fights. And not a whole ton of threat okay. uh, that you have to worry about down in that 2v2 when you are facing the Rel. So your, you know, level one uh, power deficiency isn't going to be punished all, all that much. So the Alistar with uh, some engage potential there for top esports on Mako. The combination of Tian and Cream back at it yet again. A little bit more of a different combination between Kanavi and Yigao, but I still think those two 2v2s take the spotlight. Yeah, at least in terms of being able to create action for JDG, right? JDG's comp is very one note in terms of <laughs> we know exactly who the carry is, right? A bunch of facilitators being surrounded uh, by Ruler. So it's going to be about Kanavi and Yigao being able to find opportunities or, or even shut down the potential picks and the potential dive coming out from TS with, with how much dive they have, right? Alistar, Ari, Vi, so many things flying into the back line, just like last game. He did have the resets to rely on last game as well, but this time around, he's going to need a little bit more of that tight execution here. Game number one was a resounding success for top esports. They found a lot of strength in their mid-game decision-making. They still were pressed a little bit by JDG. We had a very dead even game for so long. And then some back-to-back -back engages from Cream on his Ari set up top esports for success. They jumped out to a 3K lead, then a 6K lead, and then they won the game. Top esports using some of that momentum from game number one to crash into JDG here for game two. But JDG, they are sleeping titans. They are waiting to wake up into this series. And as we get into game number two, let's hear those Jios. So many big names, Lyric. So many big names names and only a few best of fives left in our spring playoffs only a couple spots at that msi and only one lpl spring champion i, I think both these teams uh it, you could literally throw a dart and find some big storylines some big legacies within the lpl but i think that's where the conversation of these two organizations going back to 2020 a lot of people will remember that year but they have been consistently successful it feels like yeah, right. I mean, both these teams, I mean, for JDG, more so, right, winning more titles, being able to uh, uh, make it to top four worlds twice compared to TS only doing it once. But TS have been able to make finals multiple times, four-time finalists, just sadly, a lot of the time struggling to, to get over the finish line. I mean, you especially think, again, back to, like, 2022, being able to go to five games with JDG. Hell, again, that, that other final yep. uh, in 2020, like, so many times. They've been close, but just not able to pull it over the line. So many this five year, gamers, too. Yeah, this this year might be it again. TS have not been a slouch. They, they might have lost to JDG. They might have fallen to BLG, but both series went to three games. Both series were very close. And how we saw in game one, the power that TS brings. Feels like top esports are the second strongest of the game right behind BLG. And they use that very well in their history here. And again, make it good along that uh, regular season loss to JDG, at least early on in this best of five. But the, the biggest thing is you got to keep the momentum up. JDG are a terrifying roster. We've seen them pick apart Weibo. And in that game number one, we saw them starting to find some of those advantages in the team fights, some of those moments, but they were just too far behind. So let's check in on the jungle path thing here. There will be a little bit of vision play from JDG. Kanavi has path up towards top side of the map after clearing his bot side. Trying to sniff out Tien, just taking his chicky nuggies. 
Yeah, he's been spotted, walked over a ward, so Tien ends up backing off, not finishing red, just gonna elect to go uh, do Krugs first. So we actually might have both jungles meeting with each other, okay? So Tien does get spotted out, and it looks like Kanabi's gonna commit to the invade. So a lot's gonna de be determined by Yagao being able to move over to. He's in the bush here. So Tien will not have vision. Now he uses the scanner, sees what's going down. Who's gonna move first? Both of his lanes are under pressure. This is literally just a tussle, as we're gonna see Tien try to fend off Kanavi. Guess who's roaming first? It's Gagao coming to help, and it's gonna be red buff secured there by Kanavi. He's forcing Tien out of his jungle now as well. Flandre on his way, all of JDG coming to punish Tien. Like you said, Flandre and Yagao keeping 369 and Kareem under pressure so they couldn't assist. And they start moving first, just leaving Kanavi in that 1v1. So finds a red buff and gets a flash on top of it. Nice early game advantages uh, being picked up by Kanavi. He gets the camp, gets the pressure, and gets all the summoners. Now that flash early with the Vault Breaker is so important to get this set up. So that's going to be a delayed aggressiveness from Tien. Now, Kanavi will be able to go back to his jungle. We will have the objective spawning in about 50 seconds or so. There is an engage on bot side, too. This is going to crash his way out of that one. Jackie Love getting the better of the engage there for his health bar. But there's a lot of presence on bot side for top esports now. As you'd expect, right? Uh, I mean, keeping up that presence in the 2v2. Hell, Ruler even just recalled and went for a call. So, you know, you know, acknowledging, hey, we're playing the long game, trying to get more gold in my back pocket. And like you said, not having flash limits can a little bit, but luckily, especially in terms of mid and bot, you have tons of setup there. Uh, if there ever was an opportunity to go for an early kill, but it seems like Renatia knows, hey, I just got to catch up. I got to get more levels under my belt so we can do that six point because thanks to that earlier invade, right? Kanavi is uh, just starting to barrel ahead. And that's really big. We talked about it before, but uh, he is the pillar that JDG has built around for so long, it feels like now. Uh, he was very vocal. He wanted to play with Yagao. Uh, very, very nice to see them kind of reconnected again, but it really feels like Kanavi is the driving force, the engine for JDG. Oh, yeah. I mean, right. I had to step up to be that. Coming into his own, being one of the big carries. Again, kind of reminiscent to some of the... the JDG iterations in the past. It's worked out beautifully for JDG with the, the split they've had. But now we have neutral objective spawn, both Grubs and Drake on the map. It looks like JDG with the top pile they have peeing out Grubs. Konami wanting to go for a reset first. So we'll see if Tien opts into going for a trade and heading back down. Or if he's maybe going to leverage 369 TPing back up top to try and contest. We actually see Cream moving a little quickly down towards bot side of the map. I was wondering if he was actually going to commit to that one. Kanavi transitioning up towards the top side. Some pings coming across on the grubbies. So it looks like both junglers maybe want to watch some cartoons this morning. Yeah, JDG already were pinging. They're heading out. Ooh, charm. Okay, so just forcing Cream out of lane. That's really nice. Tippers. I mean, we had JDG already pinging out that they were heading towards Grubbies even before the Kanavi recall came out. So I like this. You force 369 to go back. You now just force Cream out of lane two. This is going to give Kanavi an easy time being able to finish up these grubs. Cream doesn't their... even have TP to get back to lane. Yeah, with their composition too, you really love that. Flandre is going to be so annoying in the side lane if you can get uh, the might spawns as well. But the team fight comp itself will be able to win and then push and move very, very quickly. See Ruler feeling a little hot today. I have been seeing him uh, using the fan. He's been you know, waving his hands around. Hopefully he's uh, you know feeling all right. Feel the feel the pressure here, the heat in the moment. But I think there is about to be a little bit of heat up on the rift. This dragon being taken by top esports. Yeah, and you can see JDG making their way over. Ruler did just buy uh, Berserker Greaves, but doesn't seem like they'll be able to do anything off this. The dragon already being finished. Jackie Love also having a serrated Dirk of his own, so. A bit more power being there for both sides, but definitely still in favor of Jackie Love. Feeling very similar to that uh, first game. Very, There was a little bit of blood spilled on the Rift. I think that's just a little bit of the antsiness getting out of it. But uh, very quiet early game. A lot of things looked for, but not able to be capitalized on to. Uh, Yagao does have some nice press into the lane against Cream and will be able to get that turret plate there for himself. Top Esports have a pretty big wave down here. There is Kanavi around the corner. He just hit six. 
we'll see if they end up looking for this. Waves push in, and TS... I mean, they have a Warden River. They don't have any wards around Try if Kanavi just tried to wiggle his way in right now and find an angle for Cyclone, but it looks like they no. aren't going to go for that at the end of the day. And, you know... Oh, okay, he turned back around. <laughs> oh. So he's going to come out and check if there's any vision set up in the nearby area, probably. Nope, actually doesn't even end up walking into River. Realizes there's a lot of vision set up for Top East. What's Brown on bot side? Because that is their win condition, it feels like, right now. Jackie Love had an incredible game, number one, on the Varus. Going to do much the same. Looks like a similar build as well this time around. Maybe this is just how slow we get when we have, what do we have, five world champions on the Rift, you know? Hmm, we just, yeah, we just gotta take, got to take it a bit slower. we got to make sure we're doing I mean, we've got to go all five. So, like, I mean, that's just fate. We've seen that's these two true. teams go to five so many times. Like, it, we're just taking our time to get there, right? Oh, Kanapi's actually maybe not going to take his time. He's looking for a similar ooh, invade ooh, as ooh. he did earlier. Having that timing is Fondre. Has he a has tunnel. the heals. Goes up towards Kanabi. Kanabi has moved over here. Seeing a bit of deja vu from that early pathing there, and he's going to take the red buff yet again. And I like that Missing's also in the area. Missing made his way up towards mid when Yigao started roaming over to the red buff just to ensure Kanavi would be fine if anything happened. And, uh, yeah, just really... Uh, JDG doing a nice job of keeping track of both lanes. All right, we're in an awkward 2v2 here. Vault Breaker charged up. He does have Flash available to use that combo. Not going to go for it this time around. And both sides end up backing off. Uh, but we do have supports making their way over. More. More. Neither more. team wants to give this up. I want more bodies. Bring more people. Okay. Top esports are heading forward again. Remember, 369 doesn't have Ooh. Ooh. That's going to be a re-engage there. There go. He's going to pulverize. Flandre not able to find a big angle on the other side. So 3v3 stalemate yet again. They're, mid laners are hovering. I asked for more, but they're not going to do gonna, it after they see vision. We're just going to maintain pressure until Grub spawn. Is that, <laughs> is that the plan? Is yes. that the play? Gotta, gotta assert dominance. I kind of like leaving the 80 carries in the 1v1, but only if we see, I guess not a solo kill because all sums are up. But we see some level of, of you know, gladiatorial battle down there. <laughs> Ooh, nice dodge on the chain by Flandre with the all-in. Little combos there. You love to see it. Uh, for both these teams, uh, I think Jackie Love and Ruler are going to have a lot to say as time goes on. But it, really, the the early to mid game is built on the jungle mid 2v2s. And a lot of the influence that Missing and Mako can have on the map. Now we're seeing consistently 3v3s running around the map. TS trying to deny the might spawns from JDG. They look like they will just get all three. So neither team going to be able to contest. JDG were hoping that maybe they could find some some sort of pick or if TS overextended, didn't commit everyone up towards top side. That didn't happen. So now it means just a bit behind getting back uh, onto the bottom half of the map. Maybe they would have been able to steal some camps away otherwise. But still, Kanavi actually could just walk in right now. Still having a lot of time to assert some vision control down in bot jungle. And maybe antagonize top esports to come down towards bot side. There is an opportunity completed and maybe an opportunity in and of itself for top esports. That item spike on a Jackie Love. Dragon's still spawning in a while. So even with all this vision control data you're putting down, the path from Tian is leading down up, or I guess up towards top side rather. So we might not actually see that contest in a delayed fight for the dragon that would be so crazy to me because like you said Dracula of having the opportunity right now ruler just sitting on a noon quiver this feels like one of the times you'd have i mean tin can just fi finish up his krugs reset and then make his way down i think with the amount of pressure they'll have in bot they should be able to dissuade jdg from doing anything even if they wanted to try to contest or, or look to the dragon themselves they are pinging it out i want 5v5s we're going to have TP available for Flandre, too. He is actually just trying to crash this wave into 369. Has a bit of a CS advantage there as well in the top side of the map, as expected from the Rek'Sai. Again, a pick that we've seen not really be able to be answered much in the LPL so far. But Dragon is up. JDG are in position, and Kanavi starting it up. 
Yeah, not even thinking about it just yet. We do see Jack. Okay, Jack and Mako actually even just gonna fully back off. They they had Pryo and Bot. I thought they might look, but I guess just the threat of Tibbers and, and Cyclone being too much right now. Did we get like a handshake that we want to go late now, or like we're literally getting split objectives <laughs> across the map for both these teams? Last game was so close for so but, long until it exploded, you know, and they're just trading off here. It's not even like split objectives. Like, like when you say teams are trading objectives, right? I, I'd imagine them trading at the at the same yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, TN. We are getting some uh, moves, actually. Oh, he's gonna be denied triple knock up there from Mako, but the blue buff secured by JDG. They are a little antsy about it there. TN willing to go for the vault breaker, can't find it. And I mean, JDG did a nice job of building like this small 1k advantage off of just consecutive invades, right? They, they've gone topside, stolen away that red buff twice. They've now done it with the blue buff too. It's just small moments like this starting to build up. That and the CS advantage topside really being what's balancing out Jackie Love's lead. Ooh, ruler. Be a little careful there. They're actually just going to turn right onto missing. He's going to have to burn his flash. The rest is coming down to it. Now, the ruler does a lot of damage with that lightning crash, and it's going to be missing that claims that one. First blood to JDG. Flash play from Yagao. They actually have a lot of damage on the cream, but he has the spirit rush to get away. Kanavi trying to go the long distance wave to get him, but he had one more charge. Makes it out alive. One kill to JDG. <laughs> nice, nice counterplay coming out from JDG. I mean, committing a little too much. Uh, they did get the flash off missing, but Mako ends up paying for it. And we'll go into the replay, seeing exactly how it went down. Again, JTS just lost their, their blue bump. They lost it on Dragon. They're hoping to find a timing to make a play happen, but he just ends up getting kited out by Ruler. And especially when Tien's Q is shown, it's like, hey, you know there's no threat of him jumping in. Uh, and they could just really all in on, on trying to force Cream and Tien away. The timing from JDG was very nice. The movement from the entire team down towards bot side perfectly timed with the aggression of top esports. Now we see with that player gold graph, everyone in the lead from JDG and they can move out on the map. They can at least have more of an offensive stance here. I mean, it's similar to last time around. I, I feel like JDG will have more DPS once again, you know, having the Zeri, but they also do have better frontline coming into this game, right? Rel support, Wukong in the jungle, Rek'Sai, like, you have a ton of bodies that you have to get past as TS uh, to be able to find Ruler, unless you're finding the flanks. Uh, hell, even plays that Cream made last game, right? Like, maybe finding a charm on, onto Kanavi or Flancher won't be as impactful when there are that many people, yet, beefy people you have to get through. The front line's gonna be thick for sure. Top Esports going for the thick rift there. It's already being taken down. They should be able to use this to get some pressure in mid lane as well. But taken out and secure. This is the first one that can't be traded. So they will actually get the neutral objective advantage. Yep, going to have this now. Uh, like you said, potential to just break open mid that's going to be there. But now we come back to mid. Ruler having static shift is going to be nice to help him try and maintain prio and pressure in mid. You're really not going to have that many opportunities to try to answer sides now with, with Landry matching the Ari because I guess you could still send Vi down there, but he might be able to escape. I'm very curious at the uh, the lane swap, or at least the assignment here, where we have Yagao answering towards 369. Uh, I think the next big thing for JDG is how they get these engages kicked off. They need to have a bit of a front-to-back setup. They need to keep Ruler alive. You said that in draft. That's how they have to approach this but the engage potential from them is huge. Yagao with the flash tibbers with the stun on top could be very massive for them. Yeah, it would be huge. And to go back to, to the lane assignments, I, I think it's about sending Flandre down to match Yari because, you know, that's where the Vi would want to play around. And again, there, there's definitely some, some potential there to find that kill, especially not having any magic resist for Flandre yet, just <laughs> going straight thorn mail, which seems like, like a bit of overkill uh, to just fully complete the item <laughs> instead of just sitting on Bramble Vest. But still, it would take a lot of commitment for them to be able to take him down. Rek'Sai is absolutely an obnoxious champion right now. And again, I just don't feel like we've seen, like, good answers into it. We've seen, like, sustainable answers into it. We haven't seen, like, oppressive answers into it. Now, I, I want to keep an eye on the proactivity of Top Esports. Their mid-game last game was very impressive, the way they were pushing and pulling JDG around the map. We know JDG to be very strong in late game, but top esports upended that. 
in the game number one. Now they have the Rift Herald. They can set up their tempo play around this next dragon. And, you know, that's that's probably exactly what they're looking to do. We can see TS committing for this now. I wonder if JG answer because Dream's already used his TP. They caught them along the wall. They go for it. It's Ruler just on the back line pops his lightning crash here. Jackie Love got a claim missing. There's a TP on the other side from Flandre. This is a five-man top esports that are taking the team fight to JDG, and they catch them while they were trying to move to Dragon. Great timing to be able to find that one. They were hoping to be able to get more than missing, but still missing will be enough for them to at least claim this Drake. JDG had the option of just trying to answer for gold on the opposite side of the map, but decided against it. <laughs> that was too close for comfort. That was way too close. Oh my God, he's just taking the express subway out Obnoxious. of there. Obnoxious. <laughs> it's actually insane. Oh, the Rift Herald does get spotted up in bot side, so it'll deliver some gold handily towards TN and 369. I do got to say, though, it's the type of obnoxious that I do enjoy for now. Oh, you yeah, know, we, for sure. We haven't seen too much of it yet, so I will keep welcoming. Oh, Rex can he drive? Overlord. Can he drive? Missy wants to deny it. Oh, he can't get in front of it. He's round the corner. He's driving full speed, full head, and he got it. Look at the driving skills of TN. First turret going over to top esports and control the map regained a little bit that is a man who you know got parallel parking down on his first try uh we're gonna see the replay here like you said just getting caught in transition hoping to find their way into ruler but the charm ends up getting cleansed but still it leaves missing in the middle of no man's land and that ended up being enough i even like how ts started to back up early on being uh aware not aware but like threatened yeah. by the tp paying respect to what Fondre could have done if they over committed to running forward and i'll just say that's twice now in the series uh, maybe a couple more times as well that teams have been caught around those lips around the the, the rock and especially around the dragon pit there and the uh, difference is just the decisiveness of the engages that we're seeing come through so quickly and i think that harkens back to the point for top esports where their approach so far in this series has been to just strike when they see the opportunity into jdg yeah, and right, even though TS's early game has still been insanely strong, uh, like this split, in, especially in comparison to some other teams, it's not like they've been as, like, ruthless, bloodthirsty as, you know, maybe the, the TS yeah. of, of some past years. Very much fine with toning it down and, again, just kind of playing out the map uh, in the mid-game. We are in our uh, full first item spikes across the table. Uh, we actually see Mako taking an engage. The charm going a little bit wide there. The Fortress just moving themselves onto the map with this four-man grouping. And JDG, they don't have the items yet. They don't have the ability to really back up the engage that we were talking down so heavily earlier. And they're relying a lot on Jackie Love to get the poke down first at this point, right? Having two items finished up, he actually is going to be able to deal a significant amount of damage onto key players from JDG before they get too tanky. So I like it. Play slow around River, try and poke them out. They convert it into a turret, and they're just doing a nice job of keeping up this vision line. Oh. Potentially find picks. This might set up for the dive. Yeah, they're just all coming up here. At TS, I said they were so good at oh, moving around the map. They just catch out Konami, and he's gone. Top Esports have made the difference two mid-games in a row with their tempo plays. Yeah, just really heads up decision making. They were so fast. To pull the trigger there, Kanavi not being able to get away from that Chains of Corruption. I'm guessing Jankalov may be shooting it from a point where he didn't see him, but great by JD TS. Now 2k gold up once again ahead in Drake's. Uh, they could potentially be at soul point in a minute and a half. Just a lot going for them right now. And I think at this point, you have to start begging the question, is Varus going to be a ban priority for JDG, or, or can they just take it if they're back on blue side? Because this pick has been so crucial in setting up and making Jackie Love feel a lot com more comfortable. Yeah, it has. But first, we got to look at the dive. Is, oh, he we're going to see Flandre. It. Yep, stopping. Three, you know, I actually forgot about 369 coming in after I saw the Chains of Corruption anyway. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, tur it turned out it didn't end up mattering in the end. But to your point, I I don't know. Because we even still have other things that haven't been banned in the series. Right? That, like, Jackie Love can lean on. Like, even ignoring the Draven, right? Things like the Callista is something that Jackie Love and Mako were huge on. And I even think like Renata's Mako's second most uh, second most played champion this mm -hmm. because of it. Uh, so it's like, all right, you can take that away. 
But I think there's going to be other options there that give TS early pressure. But you're right. It will change things up a bit because Jackie Love is being able to play from a safe distance from all What's the, the Flandre Expre Express called? Does it have a cool name or is it just called the Flandre Express? I, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of the classics. So the Flandre Ex Express sits well with me. Uh, the Flanders Express works too. Ooh. Flanders I don't know why. Junction. Oh, wait. Okay. We're about to enter okay, the know. Flanders zone here. Uh, no, that doesn't work. Anyway, so no, we get work. to see JDG try to move up as the dragon is spotting in about 10 seconds now. Top Esports would go to Soul Point with that one. And again, look, they're 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 getting some some shallow vision pushed in, having knowledge of the enemy. Oh, oh, oh. oh. He's, he's gonna pop his world enter, burn his flash, double cyclone he's there. Dead? He can't heal his way out of that one, and he is gone. Now it is a four v five. And it's similar to last game where Jackie loves pushing the wave. It gives JG a small window to find a pick. Dude, TS commits still to want it? Hope. They still want to fight this. Jackie Love, step it up, has the chains of corruption. Tien waiting to get the steal. Flandre, he actually is looking as the front line here to push them off, and top yeah, esports this... will learn better of it. I mean, this makes sense. I don't think TS were ever really thinking of no one way. committing for a fight. They wanted to catch them in that side stay, thing again. Like, stay in the area. You have the bars to keep poking them out. If anyone oversteps trying to turn on you, you have your opportunity for the pick. Yeah, uh, so Yagao realizes he has to burn his, his TP or he's not going to make it out of there. Ends up getting away in the end. So, nice by JDG to, to just completely turn onto 369, now keeping us two dragons to two. Evening it up, and it all started by picking out 369. Flandre with the flash play. Yeah, 369 getting a little too big for his britches, walking uh, very far forward, where again, look where the rest of his team was. Really only Cream, really only Cream was like moving forward and, and aggressively posturing against missing in the flank, but just uh, decisive by Flandre in that small window. Ooh. Cream realized someone was there, but maybe didn't realize two people were there. Magnusaur coming in, Mako is there. Spirit Rush gonna be used, gets him out barely, and now Tien has a lot of damage to get back. Here comes Jackie Love as well. TP play from JDG. Oh. He's going to get taken out. No way. Kanabi is down. Double knockup from Mako. But Tien is the next to fall. Yagao claims his life. And now Kareem needs to make his way out of this one. He's starting to burn down. Flandre getting stopped in his tracks by Mako. <laughs> Jugglers traded on both sides. My god. The fact that TS were able to turn that on a fine one is, is quite nice. But look at this. Looks like two turrets on the map. Going to be picked up wow. by JDG. They already have been getting some vision in this right side jungle of top esports. And now, I mean, TS are going to have to contend with what they were doing to JDG in that last game. The fear that's going to be in them from some of the lack of information again. We do have a couple words laid out for TS. So, at least going to be able to yeah. see these recalls. This is the JDG we were waiting for, though. We know them to be able to choke teams out once they have control in the map or they start feeling confident, and they are just pressing that to its fullest. Nice job on the Q into the crash down. They got rid of the spell shield from the Verdant Barrier before full on committing, but it's going to be here where the, the CC chain comes through of Alistar head, but the charm, Chains of Corruption, like, my god, Kanabi never gets a chance to exit once he does enter the fray, but JDG were able to answer, so... I they think overall, JDG coming out the big winners of that play with the, with the map control that they were able to garner after that by picking up those two turrets. And that's where we have to talk about top esports a little bit more in the way that they can approach this one now because we've talked so much about JDG's teamfight potential, not only in the character they've built and the strategies they've employed this split, but this composition itself in a game number two. And top esports, they are still looking for those single targets. They really want to get the ball rolling. But it's a little bit harder to do because you don't have so many pieces committed to that just as much. So they're hoping that someone from JDG shows on bot wave, and they're J TS are thinking hopefully they don't assume that TN is here because Baron's up. But 369 is teleport, so it means TS wouldn't really be under much threat of Baron being able to go down anyway. But JDG, I don't know if they read the play because again it is a pretty common one or, or, or what, but not giving the opportunity over. You got waited until the wave got all the way into turret. Now we are on three items there for Jackie Love now as the upgrade for Mana, and we are going to be getting close to three items for Ruler as well. Jackie Love had an impressive performance in that game, number one. He had some really good moves within the team fights as well. 
ruler definitely set up a little bit more in this one than he was in that game number one so i'm really looking forward to the gunslinging these guys can bring to the table and it, it's all gonna be up to him right i mean the, the setup's gonna have to be there from everyone else but he's gonna be the one dishing out consistent dps we finally have though again flandre only becoming more more of a menace now with the visage completed And we were also excited when Ruler came over from the LCK after, you know, ha having such high highs with Gen G. And uh, he definitely made a splash in the LPL in his first year. Now looking to do so yet again. JDG start up the Baron. They have Flandre on the side missing as a bodyguard. And you step up to this club. And you got to watch out for those bodyguards coming into swing. Flandre is going to be pushed out by the TP of Top Esports. Baron stopped right now. But they're still positioning for a fight. There is a flash play. Bet they're split. They don't know which side they want to go for. Missing goes for the engage on top side. Flandre is on the bot side. Now missing is less health bar than they went in with. And Flandre. Oh no. Flandre. Flandre gets caught completely out. He tries to void rush to safety, but he cannot. Jackie Love claims the kill. Cream. Spirit rushing to try to get the charm. But the oh. tempo now for top esports is they can move to the dragon if they want to. I'm just glad they didn't leave Mako behind. It looked like they... Oh! Ooh, Ruler popped the lightning crash there, so that's another big cooldown used. Okay, so now JDG trying to, to make the play up towards Baron. We'll see if they commit to baiting out or if they just end up taking away this vision. They're just baiting okay. it. They're not going to be crazy. Maybe... I guess they didn't know that Tian was already oh. just in the dragon by himself. Oh, no. They knew that they would just walk up, but that's a tanky cow! And he has hordes, baby! 369 going for the flash play. Can't get it. Tian goes for that ball breaker. And oh. here comes Cream yet again. He's got the spirit rush back up. And he's over the wall. Ruler, the only one left to live. And he can hold against the tide. That is top esports. A quadra kill for the nine of top esports. Huge deep bite coming out for TS. 369 picking up so many of those kills finishing off his Sereldas off the back of that and now they can just get back on the map and run straight to dragon what a play top esports hanging with the best of them proving why they're that second seed and they've just been waiting for the competition to approach now they are onto the dragon side of the map blondre spots them out but they will start this one up and this is soul point for them on a mountain soul yeah, they should be able to pick this one up, not having as much DPS with, with Jackie Love, of course, being down. But with the Death Timer still being there, with Ruler still not being up, it seems like JDG not even going to think about even posturing in front of TES. Uh, so now, a lot of control. 2k gold lead, not much, but finally seeing, seeing the gold standstill break in one direction. And it just feels so right to see 369 popping the hell off. We came into this series saying he's the best top laner in the LPL, maybe even one of the best in the world. And he's having a hell of a performance on an Aatrox that he was kind of rebuffed early on in the game. The, the Rek'Sai is hard to play up against, but now he's finding impact because they cannot focus him. They have to focus so many other pieces of top esports in the team fights. Yeah, and again, we were... Oh, we're going Okay, right JDG. I see you. Let's see if they want to go for the 50-50 here. They might just be trying to take the game off of an engage on the back of it. It's already down about a quarter health here. Tien looking on the backside of the pit, but here comes JDG's engage. They take out Flandre so quickly. Kanavi, he finds Jackie Love, the double cyclone, but Ruler on the other side's got the damage now. He's got the AOE, but he's got no team. Everyone's got it. Jackie Love and Cream, here comes the cease and desist, and they want to use it on the JDG now, but they get turned on its head. Flandre's still alive and still kicking and jackie love he's gonna get taken out by the monstrous beast that is jdg ah uh, they they over aggressed mako did such a good job of creating space for the rest of the team to find those first two kills and now jdg actually gonna be able to turn this into a baron ruler is pumping the damage now as well he was able to dodge out of a lot of the re-engage the top esports were throwing their way and that's the problem with top esports is cop they have to go full ham every time they do cream is here full health with spear rush available he can be a nuisance and they don't have smite 
So here comes Kanavi out of it, but Kareem wants to get in there and steal it. He's not going to use a spear rush in. The Baron getting low. He goes in. Kareem gets it. And the final piece to the puzzle for Top Esports comes alive again. He takes out Yagao, and he takes out JDG's hopes of a Baron. The man walks in and just takes the cash straight out of the register. JDG, what are you doing? Uh, not able to deny him entry, trying their best, but that is a big reprieve for TES. No way, man. No way. Oh my god, Cream, dude. I cannot speak more highly of this guy. Just a year and a half ago, there were some doubts as to where that consistency went from him. But man, on top of esports, he has been making the difference in this playoff so far. Yeah, I mean, finds the way in again, sadly. No jungler there for, for JDG to be able to confirm that one, but ah, oh, he's such a great window. And Cream, two games in a row now, having such big game-defining moments. It's really been great to see. And it's not on a Karma, it's not on a Facilitator, it's not an Ari that combos well as a dual carry potential for top esports in the combination with TN. And they are the ones that are taking advantage now with a little bit of that lead in their direction but it's still a very even game against the JDG who we know is so lethal as time goes on. The good thing is, look at the timers on the top. Like, uh, they, uh, they sync up quite nicely as TS should be able to at least maintain Pryo to be, to, you know, be in the advantageous position for that next dragon, for what would be their soul. So hopefully they can leverage this well, not get picked off by JDG. Uh, you can see there's a bit of fear in terms of overextending too far with this Baron to pressure some of these turrets. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a ton of CC by JDG, right? If you're only showing one or two on a side lane, that's where JDG will be looking. Four and a half items now for Ruler, almost on that full build for the Zeri. We've seen him there before. We're on fourth item now for Jackie Love, as well as 369. We're going to be fourth item for Yagao. We are getting to those late game builds. And one big team fight, just like last game, could really explode the lead either way. Yeah, with the out finishing up that Morello, I think he's just consciously saying, like, hey, this, like, this next fight is the big fight. I just need to have as many stats as I can, fin you know, finish up whatever I can finish up. And we're going to see now if that's what they opt into, because TS now trying to force their way into River. Oh, they could force could. it, all right. <laughs> I was going to say, even if they wanted to be a bit more cautious, they could have even waited uh for this next wave to to use their buff on and you know again guarantee prior walk into river yeah the big thing i'm looking at is, now. is uh wards right now for the top laners we are just going to get the tp in from flandre he has completed his steric's cage so he's even more tanky 369 has just walked his way down here kanavi on the other side make already chunk pretty heavily here lyric and be in a little bit of trouble. Flandre can play so confidently, and it's all about Ruler. It's all about playing around JDG's foremost carry. We'll see if oh. they can do so. Yagao is already chunked. Exactly. That's two Qs. Only two Qs have hit Yagao since the standoff started. He's already having to opt into a reset. This they is a soul. That? This is a soul. This is a mountain soul for top esports. Flandre missing the engage there. They're going to turn back onto the, the dragon pit, rather. You got really try to force this recall. Yeah, I mean, he got spotted out the first time. It seems like TS maybe maybe not going to assume that he's just going to go for it out right after backing off, or they could have tried to force an engage through. Still taking this one very slowly. And look at the waves on the minimap. Like, top's pushing into them, mid's pushing into them. It's not in a great spot. And get a little bit of damage on the Flandre. They're waiting out for the Chains of Corruption here. It's coming up actually very shortly for Jackie Love. Flandre trying to go on the flank here. Kareem getting chunked by Ruler. And it's Kareem starting to, to get now? huge. Yeah, he is. They need to wait, though, because Chains of Corruption is up now for Jackie Love. But JDG don't want to wait any longer. The back will get completed. Oh, my God. It's just back and forth, Lyric. I love it. And now they're actually just going to send Kareem mid, but now JDG are, are starting, gotta, so he needs he to has TP in. TP. He's, He's going bot wave. side, half health on the dragon here, but top esports, they can fight their way out of this one. Ruler not going to pop the lightning crash yet. Kareem over the edge here. Dragon is the focus right now. Tien is in the pit, but he can't get it. Kanavi gets it in the end, missing very low. Kareem on the other side, but they already get the GA popped here. And now Jackie Love has to fight his way out of this one. JDG, they want to go for the blood though. They're on to Ruler, but Ruler stands tall. 
Oh, here comes Cream. Here comes 369. They can't get him, but they can get the front line. It's a triple kill for 369. And Top Esports, they didn't lose a single body. That's a quadra kill again for 369. And he keeps adding them up. Two quadra kills in one game for 369 on the Aatrox. This man is really delivering in these team fights. And now TS going to be able to take the reward of taking some of these structures from JDG. JDG are going to be kicking themselves from that one. I think two TS games? just win. Yeah. That's two games in a row that JDG have been taking the task. They were the team fighting team, but you can't fight as a team if you're all dead. Top Esports push us to match point. What a big game from TS. Again, we were coming in hyping up JDG's team fighting, but my god, TS is finding a way. That Hawaiian shirt's looking real good on Top Esports, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, like we said, there's no way we don't get five games, Mazel. What is happening? My god. What a game. Top Esports, they didn't need any time to warm up. <laughs> they, they had all the tape they needed in those three games against... Uh, against Weibo that JDG have and it's two games in a row that we see a ruler based composition where we see the jungle combos coming through what has worked for JDG but just like JDG did against Weibo there is a big old wall in their way and they just keep headbutting themselves against it and falling short that is it for game number two we'll see if JDG can push us to a reverse sweep or if top esports